Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to start getting into modding our server. In order to do that, we have to install Oxide and I'm going to show you how to do all of that and what to do with it once it's installed. Stay tuned, check it out. All right, so over the last two videos, I've shown you how to install your server in one video. And in the second video, I showed you a couple of hints and tips and tricks and stuff like that uh, to help you run a more efficient server. Okay, tonight we're gonna get into actually modding the server, which is kind of the fun slash frustrating part of the job, uh, but it is required unless you just wanna run a vanilla server. If you wanna run a vanilla server, just leave it alone as it is right now and you are vanilla. As soon as you install Oxide onto your server, you're no longer considered vanilla. You won't show up in the communities tab. You will only show up in the modded tab and this is gonna happen automatically. There's nothing you need to do about it. If you haven't seen the video on how to set up your server, click this link right up here uh, for part one and up here for part two. And it goes over really detailed on how to install your server and get everything up and running. Okay, so there's three things that I want to go over with you guys tonight. Uh, and it's stuff that we didn't get into in episode one, part two. Uh, I want to show you guys how to wipe your blueprints and wipe your server. So uh, there's two different situations. Some people will do a different wipe schedule than what's dictated by Face Punch. Face Punch does their forced wipes every first Thursday of the month. But let's say you want to do like a weekly wipe or a bi, -bi weekly wipe or whatever. If you need to control your wipe schedule, not forced by face punch, I'm going to show you how, how to do that. All right, so <clears throat> here's our server up and running. And funny enough, there's somebody actually in there playing and they're going to get a rude awakening when I shut that server down. I'm actually going to start the restart process right now. Okay, so our server is safely shut down and it did a save right before it shut down, which whatever, that doesn't matter to you guys right now. So the first thing I want to show you guys is these two map saves right here. Um, if you want to do a map wipe, but you want to retain your blueprints for your next wipe, uh, just delete these two files while your server is offline. If you want to do a blueprint wipe as well as a map wipe, you will delete all three of these files. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So just simply delete that. And then we go back and we restart our server. Now, once this server is up and running, it will officially be a map wipe as well as a blueprint wipe back to a fresh vanilla server. Okay, so here you can see we now have our freshly wiped server uh, brand new map. There's no bases on this map. There's no nothing on this map as well as we've we've wiped blueprints So I should have showed you this before actually um, down below here. It's actually giving you some information. It's giving you um, How many sleepers are on your server and as you saw Before I shut the server down there was one sleeper and one active player on there So a good quick way to realize that your server is actually successfully wiped is this server count will go back to zero Okay, uh, I also should have mentioned that if you wanted to change which map seed you were using while your server is offline is the time to make that change. So here we've got our batch file down here and we've got server seed number 15. And if you wanted to change that, that would be the time to do that when your server is offline. Just change that to whatever server seed you wanna use. All right, moving on. So the next thing that we need to get into is installing uh, Oxide 2 onto your server. So to do that, we go to umod.org. I'll put a link in the description. And we go to games. And we click on Rust. Oh, I should show you this as well. Um, it will always show you the latest version of Oxide. Um, so the, the last version was pushed out 26 days ago. Uh, you kind of want to keep an eye on that. You're going to notice when there's when you start having problems with some of your plugins, um, always go check for a new update of, of Oxide uh, before you start diving into individual plugins. Normally an Oxide update will fix most of your issues. All right, so we want to download Oxide. So we click on download, check it down in the left hand corner, make sure that it's downloading properly. And yes, it is, all is good. Okay, so we're gonna go into our downloads folder right here and you can see Oxide Rust. This is a zipped file, so we need to extract it. And we're going to do that here. We're going to go extract here. And this is the folder that we want right here, this Rust dedicated underscore data. Okay, so before we do anything with that, we have to shut our server down. 
So we're just gonna type quit so it does it real quick. Okay, before we can actually move this onto uh, into the folder where our server is actually hosted, we have to do some changes to our batch file. There's a specific line in here where we're telling Steam to actually go in and update the server to the latest version uh, put out by Facepunch. We have to actually remove this entire line. So right from where you're telling it to load Steam, to log in anonymous, force, blah, 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 we need to delete this entire line. The reasoning for that is if you're using an automatic restarter plugin or you're using a Archon to automatically restart your server or anything like that, you don't want the server to update to the latest version of Rust every time it starts. If you do that, it will reverse having Oxide on there. So if you left that line in there, but you had Oxide put into your folder, it would just delete that. It would just put it right back to a vanilla server. Okay, so we are going to copy this. We're gonna paste it in here. And yes, we wanna replace all of the files. And then we're gonna restart our server. And you're gonna see things look a little bit differently uh, from the from when it's a vanilla install. Uh, you'll see a lot of different stuff loading in the background that you didn't see there before, which is okay. All right, as you can see, we have our server back up and running and everything looks good. We've got zero sleepers. We've got a fresh map wipe. All is good. Our title is good. Everything is good. So when you're in your folder where your actual server is located, uh, things are going to look a little bit different now that you've installed Oxide. So we still have the server and, and all that same information that we had in there before. The important folder that I want you to notice is this Oxide folder. This is where you're going to do all of your modding, okay? So it's pretty simple stuff. Um, when you download a plugin, you want to put it into this folder. And when you want to configure that plugin, you want to you want to be in this folder right here. So all of your config files here, you can mess around with stuff in here. You can change stuff up. Uh, that's where you can work on all of your details. I will caution you though, you can actually break a plugin quite easily by configuring different things on the config files. It's going to tell you exactly what you did wrong and it'll kind of tell you how to fix it. Uh, but I'll caution you there. The files that you put into the plugins folder though, don't edit those, don't touch them, just put them in there and leave them alone, forget they even exist, okay? Don't change anything inside of a plugin, unless you're good with C Sharp, and then you can go in there and you'll know the environment that you're in and you can edit whatever you want. All right, so the first plugin that I want to get into is Better Chat. Better Chat is probably one of the most underrated plugins out there uh, as far as a server owner or an admin goes because it gives you an astronomical amount of control. Um, I'll install the plugin and I'll also show you what it looks like when a plugin is just like thrown in there and nothing's actually really done with it. Hopefully this doesn't pop up on our screen. Okay, no, we're good. Okay, so better chat. We want to download it. We click the download. It drops into our download folder. As you can see, I've already downloaded it. So we're just going to grab that file, copy it and paste it into the plugins folder. And you'll actually see it load here in a second. Okay. So here it is right here. Uh, loaded plugin, better chat version 5.0.19. All right. So cool. It has also regenerated that file that I deleted a minute ago called better chat. And this is what the configuration looks like for better chat. I'm sorry, I sent you to the wrong location for this. You actually want to be in data, data for better chat. So let me just go back. Most of your configuration stuff is going to be done in this folder. Sometimes it's done in data. You'll notice that with like stack size controller and stuff like that, it goes into your data folder. There are some things you can do in the config file, but some sometimes it'll land in your data folder. All right, so this is what your your configurable data file looks like for better chat. And this is just default. This will automatically generate. So I'm just going to open rust and show you what it actually looks like uh, when better chat is installed and nothing is done to it. All right. So here we are in our server. And one of the first things that you'll notice is now it says, beside my name, it says player, right? So when you've gone into a server before, and most often you're gonna find it in like brand new servers, fresh servers, people that haven't really set things up yet, you're gonna see that. 
and it just says player okay and here's why it says that in our better chat folder or our better chat uh, config file it says the default group name so now everyone that comes into your server is automatically going to be placed into the group called default and i'm going to show you guys how to set up different groups and different reasons for setting up those groups but we'll get into that in a minute so if you wanted to say something else besides player beside their name you can put in here you can put whatever you want let's put um better chat tests group name Oops. Name. And then so you save that. And you all every time you make a change in your config file, you have to save it and then reload it. So you go oxide dot reload better chat. And when you're doing that, you have to do oxide dot reload. And you have to write it out exactly as it's written in the actually in the actual plugin name, but normally the config file is named the same as the plugin name so you have to have capital b and capital c in better chat okay so now we've made that change we can go back to the gameplay and we should be able to do test and now it says better chat test group name it it's just that easy to change uh the name of a group okay so uh let's go back and let's say we don't want that to be shown at all. Let's say we just want it to look default or vanilla or whatever. You can actually make that title hidden, right? So right here, uh, let's just change this to hidden true, okay? And we save it. And we reload the plugin again. And we go back to gameplay, do another test. Now it says nothing next to my name. And it just looks like it were a vanilla server. Okay. So what instances would you ever need this? Why is this helpful? Well, setting up groups is probably the best, one of the most powerful tools that you can use as a server owner, okay? So you can set up, I mean, obviously default is just default and everyone is gonna be added to that group. But you can give certain permissions for other plugins, which we'll get into in later episodes, but you can add certain permissions from those plugins just to that group. So why does that matter? Well, you want a certain group of people to have, you know, uh, gather rates set at, two times or five times or 10 times or whatever. And then, so that's gonna be a default thing, a default group permission. But then there's gonna be, you're gonna have groups, you're gonna have moderators and you're gonna have admins and stuff like that that are gonna have vastly different permissions associated with their group. So like you could do, if you have an, let's say you have a moderator and you want them to be able to vanish. Well, you're gonna apply that vanish permission which means that they can be invisible, very powerful plugin, very dangerous plugin, but you can only make it so that people that are added to the admin group have that capability, okay? So you can, you can start to see why this is important and why this is such a valuable tool uh, as a server owner. You wanna be able to differentiate different permissions for different groups. And it also gives you the ability to give people titles um let's say you have a like a let's say you have a youtuber that's going to come into your server and you want them to you want to give them a special title beside their name and you want to make it gold or you want to make it purple or whatever you can do all of that using better chat it's a very powerful plugin all right so let's get into creating a new group as well as adding people to that group so let's go back to um, we're going to do these changes in the actual server itself not in the config file yet uh, you're going to see something kind of neat happen though when i make this change so let's do um we're going to add a new group so let's do chat group add and we want to call this one admin successfully added group admin okay 
So now when you click back down here, it's going to ask you, do you want to reload that file? Because we made a change over here and now it, it automatically made the change and is asking us, do we want to see the new revised version of our, of our data file? And yes, we do. So now you can see that we have admin down here. So let's change this title to server admin. Okay. And again, we were, you remember that this default, which is the group that I'm currently in right now has no title beside it because we made the title hidden. And this group here is now called server admin and their title is not hidden. Therefore we're going to see that person with that title in the server when they chat. Okay. So let's, uh, we need to add somebody to that group before we can do that. So we go, uh, uh, let's get my, let's see if we can just use my name, chat user add bull myself. And we want to add bull to the group admin. So it goes chat user add bull admin. Okay. So bull is already in the group admin. Okay. So because I have auth level two on this server, it's already added me to that group. And so let's just see what this does. Okay. So now it says server admin and then my name. Uh, let's say that we want to change the color of that group's name so that it stands out more in, in the game. And uh, we can do that down here just by changing the, the hex code right here. Uh, and in order to find what hex code that you want to use, just, just Google hex code color picker. It's a super easy way. All right. So let's say we want to make that green and this looks like a good green right here. Sorry. I know I didn't show you guys that, but I will, I'll put a link in the description, uh, for a good color picker. Okay. So here we've got a, a hex code for green and we're going to save that and we're going to reload the plugin. Okay. And then we're going to go back to gameplay. And all right. So now you can see that my title is now the green color that we picked. All right. So that's a real quick synopsis of better chat and what it can do for your server and what it can do for you as an admin. Um, one pointer that I'll, I know that we set up a server admin tag and let's be honest here. We don't want players knowing that we're the server admin. If you ever want to play on your own server and not have people coming after you, asking you to spawn things in and stuff like that, you don't want them to know that you're the server admin. So this right here, what you're seeing on my screen is not a good idea. And I don't suggest you do it. Uh, you can call yourself whatever you want. You can put whatever title you want in there. You could in fact have no title at all and still assign yourself to a group and still assign that group different permissions, but not everyone in the server doesn't need to know that. Okay. It will help you become a more efficient admin moderator server owner. Okay. So that's going to be it. We're going to get into a lot more detail later as we start, once we start adding admin plugins and stuff like that, I'll show you how to actually do that with better chat so that it's quick and easy for you to add people to that group or remove people from that group as you hire and fire or promote uh, moderators to admins or vice versa or whatever, however it goes. Anyways, if you guys found this video at all helpful, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up for me. It costs you no effort and it helps me out huge with the YouTube algorithms. And if you want to see more of this content and there's going to be a ton of it, I'm going to keep making videos on different plugins. And if there's something that you guys want to see specifically, make sure you put a comment down below and let me know what plugins you want to actually see. Anyways, if you want to see more of these, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys later.